I should not be here before you today. And if I had listened to the advice that countless people throughout my life have given me, there's absolutely no way that I would be. You see, I've always had big goals, big dreams, and big ambitions. And every time I would run up to someone just full of joy and excitement, ready to burst, and share these things, all too often I've been met with, don't you think that you should be a little bit more realistic? As well-meaning as they may have intended to be, what they were telling me was that those dreams and those goals, they didn't believe that I could accomplish them. They didn't believe that I could do them. They didn't believe in me. <clears throat> Ever since I was a little girl, I've always dreamed about being married and having my white picket fence and living happily ever after. And when I would go out on dates with people, I would come back and tell my friends about it, and you know, um, you know, they would all, they would, there just wasn't something. There was something that wasn't right, and they would always tell me, be like, oh, maybe you're being a little too picky. Maybe you need to lower your standards. But to me, it didn't, it didn't feel that it was right. Because, see, I believe in fairy tales, and I believe in love at first sight and soulmates. And, and it just, and I couldn't settle. I couldn't settle, and I couldn't lower my standards. In 2006, I moved to North Carolina, to a little small town in Jacksonville. And I started bartending at the Marina Cafe. One night while I was working, I got a call. And this guy's on the phone and he says, do you guys have karaoke? Now anyone that's ever been in a small town knows that there's probably nothing else to do besides karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell him, yes, yes we do. <laughs> so <laughs> he says, all right, well, we're going to come in there and we're going to rock your socks off. About, about half an hour later, he calls back. He's like, where are you located? And I tell him and he says, all right, well, we're going to come in there and we're going to rock your socks off. And I'm like, okay, this guy's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I up the phone. A short while after, in walks this vision of a man. Oh, my God. He was glowing. And to me, he looked like an angel just walking through the store. I didn't even notice the three other people that came in with him. And he sat down. And I took the order, and I asked him, I said, well, I said, who's, so who's the singer of the group? And he said, I am. And I said, all right, well, I said, then you have to sing my song. He said, Brown Eyed Girl. He says, only if you buy me a drink and tell me you love me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm taken, I'm taken back a little here, because here he is with these you know, three other people. I'm thinking he's on a date. Oh my gosh, like, what do I do, right? So I go get him his drink. <laughs> um, a little time goes by, and I ask him, I said, well, how come you haven't sang my song yet? He says, because you didn't tell me you loved me. And I look at him, and I said, all right, well, I love you now. Go play my song. <laughs> when he goes up there to sing my song, his friend is waving me on. He says, you know, go on up there with him. And I'm sitting here looking for every excuse under the sun not to go with him. Finally, I ran out of excuses and I had to go. I think we laughed through the entire song. I don't think that we got a single lyric out. And we ended up, you know, we ended up, uh, <laughs> as soon as the song was over, um, I went back to my bar and tried to stay away because I knew that this was trouble. I, I already knew that this was trouble. So he comes to me before he leaves and he says, you want my number, don't you? And I just look up at him and I said, I don't even know your last name. So he tells me, he says, my name is RJ Rady. And I gave him my number. The next day he called, we spent all night together talking about everything and nothing at all and by the time that that day was over we decided that we were going to get married <laughs> everybody thought that we were crazy i thought we were crazy 
Um, but I knew that he was the one. And he knew that I was the one. We spent five beautiful and crazy adventurous months together. And then I got that call. His father called me. And he said, I'm sorry, but RJ's gone. At that moment, I felt like I was outside of myself. Um, my heart was just ripped out of my chest. I wanted to die. <laughs> This man, this man was everything that I dreamed that he would be. And the love that I knew in my mind existed was real. It wasn't a fairy tale or, you know, that thing that you've watched in the movies. It, it exists. And I didn't settle. And I didn't lower my standards. His death, as much as it killed me, gave me life. You see, I had to believe in myself. I had to create my own reality, and I did. When people tell you to be more realistic, start listening to yourself and say, hey, what is realistic? What is possible? You know, there's a reason why there's movies and books about these fairy tales and these dreams and about people doing all these amazing things. And they had people tell them to be more realistic and they didn't listen to them. You have to listen to what your version of reality is. And you have to believe that, that of, of what is possible. <clears throat> You can create your own reality. Thank you. Thank you.